Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for November the 10th, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin here in the atrium at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan, standing in front of Luther's seal, which was created for the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and it's all made out of Legos. So if you haven't seen that, or if you, you haven't seen it in a while, come and take a look at it. It's quite a marvel. Uh, and uh, the, the result of a lot of work of a lot of people. Everyone gave a little of their time and their efforts, and some gave more out of the abundance that they had to make that project work. And I mention that because we're going to be talking about the parable of the talents today and how God gave different gifts to different people with the same expectation to use those gifts according to his, his mercy and for his glory. Uh, but we're going to talk about how that story is not about our performance, it really is all about faith. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First, we hear from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So, so we see this framework being set up for the story I'm about to tell you in Matthew 25. It's all about uh, the understanding, beginning with that understanding that the fullness of the earth all belongs to our Heavenly Father. We forget sometimes, I know I do, and think about things that uh, that God has blessed me with as those things that belong to me. But no, they'll, they'll either wither and fade away, or I will, and they'll be around. But there is no permanence with the things of this world, only with the things of God. Okay, here's the parable. Matthew 25, beginning at verse 14. Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more. Wow. <laughs> and saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who also had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered not. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, I have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed, that you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has more, who has, will be more given, and he who will have an abundance. But from that one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it sounds pretty harsh, and it sounds a lot like performance-based grace, doesn't it? This parable on its surface appears to say, if you do more for God, he will give you more. And if you don't do anything for God, he will give you nothing. But really, it's all about faith. It, and here's how that works. And I preached on this a little while ago, uh, last year, and so I'm going to consult a couple of notes that I made for that sermon as well. Uh, the master gives extraordinary grace uh, in these gifts to each servant, between 1.5 and $7 million each. 
according to their ability, as the parable says. So it's an extraordinary, gracious gift. And then he goes away and says, you know, work with this. Work with what I've given you. And we see those two servants seeing that as a positive. They, they step out boldly, trusting, and here's the key, trusting in their master and what he has done for them, just as the master has trusted them with these great gifts. And the third servant has this different perspective. And that's really, I probably should have mentioned that again in the reading, just to see what the, what the third servant responded when the master said, hey, what do you got for me? He said, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow. And so he didn't trust the Lord. The Lord trusted him, but he didn't trust the Lord. So see, it really is a story about faith, not about performance at all. Seeing the parable come out this way, the outcome for the third servant is not a pronouncement of punishment, really, but it really is a confirmation of the place in which that third servant already existed. It's the, it's the Lord, the Master, it's our Heavenly Father, saying to that third servant, you clearly have always been outside the kingdom, not having faith in me, not having trust in me, and therefore not having the desire to glorify me with the gifts you've been given. So yes, there's definitely stewardship going on here. But more than anything else, there's faith. Because really, true stewardship comes from true faith, doesn't it? In fact, listen to these two verses. First, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. And Hebrews 11, 1, beginning of that great, that great chapter on faith. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. See, the third servant sees only through worldly eyes. There's no faith there. And so fear dominates his heart, dominates his actions. When the master returns, he's displeased. Why? Well, one last reference from Hebrews 11:6, and this explains it. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek them. So we could talk about eternal rewards and whether those exist or not. There's definitely ample evidence to say that there are rewards in heaven. But of course, the only true reward, the greatest reward, is our eternal life through Christ. And that's not something that we can obtain. That's something that God has given to us freely through Jesus Christ. And that's what this parable is all about. It's all about acting in faith. In true stewardship, certainly, but faith begins that whole process. So we walk by faith not by sight, and we thank God for that faith that he has given us. Well, let's pray. We'll pray um, uh, hymn 781, verse 2. Very appropriately, we give thee but thine own, and the prayer of the day as well. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, may we thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, and gladly as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. We pray this through Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Spend today in prayer with God as you walk by faith and not by sight in this world. Have a wonderful day.